In alchemical reactions, energy in the form of heat is either released by the chemical reaction or it is absorbed by the chemical reaction. When a reaction releases heat, this type of reaction feels warm to us. If we were to touch the reaction or stand near the reaction, it would feel warm. We would be able to feel the energy or heat as it is being released. For example, a fire or anything burning, if we stand near it, touch it, we can feel the energy and the heat that is being given off or released by that reaction. In contrast, a reaction that absorbs energy or absorbs heat is one that feels cold. For example, if you imagine holding an ice cube in your hand and holding it while the ice cube melts, this process, the melting of the ice cube, absorbs a lot of energy. And so to us, as we hold this ice cube while it melts, while it absorbs energy, it feels very cold. A reaction that releases energy that feels warm to us is referred to as an exothermic reaction. And a reaction that um, absorbs energy that feels cold to us, this is referred to as an endothermic reaction. It's not very useful to define an exothermic reaction as a reaction that feels warm. It's also not very useful to define an endothermic reaction as one that feels cold because not all exothermic reactions involve the transfer of a large amount of heat. Some of them might involve the transfer of a very small amount of heat, a small amount that is not enough for us to detect. Uh, likewise, some endothermic reactions involve the uh, absorption of a very small amount of heat, and we might not be able to actually feel that heat as it is being absorbed. So a better way for us to define an exothermic reaction is that it is a process where energy is transferred from what we call the system to what we call the surroundings. So energy or heat is being moved from the system to the surroundings. It is being released by the system and transferred to the surroundings. Let's take a minute to explain what we mean when we say system. This is kind of a funny definition. In science, we define the system as the object or the process that is being studied. And we define the surroundings as everything else. Everything else in the entire universe. So the surroundings is literally defined as everything that's not the system. So thinking about our fire example, in this example, the system is the fire. This is the object that we're studying. This is the object that is transferring or releasing energy. And the surroundings would be everything else. The air and the area around the fire, you if you're standing near the fire, detecting the fire, um, all of that around the fire would be defined as the surroundings. So for an exothermic reaction, the energy transfer is the opposite in an, in, excuse me, in an endothermic reaction. In an endothermic reaction, the energy is being transferred in the opposite direction from the surroundings to the system. If we think about our example of you holding an ice cube in your hand, the ice cube in this example is the system. The ice cube is the object that we are studying. The ice cube is the object that is absorbing energy. And everything else is the surroundings. So your hand that's holding the ice cube, your entire body holding the ice cube, and all of the area around that, all of that would be the surroundings. So in this type of reaction, your hand, the surroundings, um, your hand is transferring heat or energy into the ice cube. This is why it feels cold to you because the heat from your body, from your hand, is leaving your hand and going into the ice cube and being used by the ice cube during the melting process. Let me add um, a definition up here to the word heat. Heat is a word that we use in everyday language and we use it the same way in science. Heat is thermal energy. It's energy associated with temperature. One of the unique things about heat is that it can only be moved in one particular direction. So thermal energy is 
um, transferred always from the warm object, from a warm object to a cold object. This is a really important concept, and it's one that we kind of confuse in just, you know, sort of our everyday understanding of temperature. Heat can only be transferred from warm objects to cold objects. So thinking about our fire, the heat from the fire can only be transferred from the warm fireplace to the cold air around the fire. If we're thinking about the ice cube, heat can only be transferred from your warm hand into the ice cube. It is not possible to transfer cold or coldness. In fact, cold is just not an actual thing in science. So if you think about if you're holding an ice cube and the ice cube is transferring coldness to you or um, giving you coldness and making you feel cold, that's a backwards or inaccurate way to think about it. It is not possible for the ice cube to transfer coldness to you. However, it is only possible for you to be transferring your heat into the ice cube. And this, you transferring your heat, is what's causing you to feel cold. When we measure or detect endothermic or exothermic reactions, we typically do this with a regular thermometer. We just measure um, and monitor the temperature as it is either going up or the temperature as it is going down. But when we express or communicate the energy or heat that is being transferred in an exothermic or endothermic reaction, we use scientific units that are not associated with temperature. The units that we typically use to express heat or energy in a chemical reaction are either calories or joules. The calorie unit, this is a lowercase c calorie, is equivalent to 4.184 joules. And this is a really important conversion. You're gonna to have to do this conversion quite a, bit, quite a bit, so it's important that you keep it handy. I do want to also point out to you that there is another unit, calorie, spelled with a capital C. This is a nutritional calorie um, that you would see on food packaging. And this capital C calorie is the equivalent of 1,000 small c calories. So this is, like I said, just an important thing to kind of keep handy, these units and their conversion factors because we will need to reference them in a lot of the problems that we do with this particular type of material.